Hello and welcome back to my channel and in today's review I'm going to be taking a look at the Unique Toys Destroyer. If you are in the market for picking one of these figures up then I definitely recommend that you click the links below where you'll be taken to Shozy store where you can buy this figure as well as other transforming collectibles. Back now to the review and yet again we have another absolutely fantastic release by Unique Toys. Now if this figure does appear rather familiar to you that is because this figure is indeed a repaint of the Unique Toys Challenger that was released last year. This figure just gives him a more Nemesis Prime updated colour scheme with a brand new more superior head sculpt. As always, we'll start off with taking a look at the figure's accessories, and he does in fact actually include a plethora, the largest of which is in fact Optimus's shield, and this looks extremely faithful to what we see Optimus use in The Last Night and Age of Extinction movie, only of course this time it has been given the more Nemesis Darker Prime type of colour scheme, and I've got to say that I definitely think it looks better for it. I absolutely love this turquoise type of blue, almost greenish colour that is situated on the shield as well as is the colouring for the flames. As you can see, we've got some lovely lovely detailing of some gold highlights and the whole shield does in fact appear to have been given a gunmetal silver effect which definitely makes it look really really premium. When you turn around to the side unfortunately we do in fact just have some unsculpted unpainted plastic however you can clearly pick out the plug that it does in fact have into the forearm and this small nub that will plug into the trailer hitch when we get it into vehicle mode. But this is not the only look you can have for the shield. If you take these two halves and actually split them apart you can in fact create the gun look that we see see him use in Age of Extinction where the shield can actually dub as a gun. As you can see this has been picked out in some nice silver paint and has some subtle detailing however is not as detailed as something like the 3A version but nevertheless I think that this is a really nice inclusion and whilst this is a fairly simple gimmick it does work really really nicely when displaying the figure. When transforming the shield you do in fact expose this section which is actually used to help hilt the sword in robot mode. You simply fold this out and if you wish collapse this section and taking the sword which we'll cover in more detailing you simply just plug that over the top and there you have the sword and the shield connected together ready to be implemented onto the figure's back. Taking a look at Optimus's sword this is by far one of the most detailed accessories that this figure comes with as you can see it is just absolutely covered in sculpted in Cybertronian hieroglyphs which have been sculpted so precisely that they really do look very movie accurate. This whole center section is in fact a separate piece to give the sword an extra sense of realism and there is loads and loads of sculpted detailing which has been accompanied by an amazing gunmetal silver which really makes this look very weathered and worn. We've also got that same metallic green and bluish type of colour scheme on the handle of the sword and this looks really really awesome and is very very reflective and then turning down to the handle we also have got some amazing sculpted detailing with some very nice subtle green paint apps on the end of the sword to give it an extra sense of detailing. One of the more basic accessories that this figure comes with is in fact the dagger that we see him very briefly deploy in the last night when he is about to decapitate Bumblebee. As you can see, I think that this has been detailed nicely and definitely does represent what we see in the film. However, in terms of paint, it is fairly boring as it does appear to have just been cast in a gunmetal sparkly type of plastic. So there really isn't much going on here, but this is a nice inclusion as it gives you a different weapon to display with your Optimus figure. Now, not only do you get those accessories, but you also get a pack of bonus accessories if you ordered the first release of the figure. As you can see here, I have in fact decided to leave these in the packet just so you can see how they come packaged. But upon opening them, it is exceptional easy and of course one of the larger accessories that you do get is in fact Merlin's staff this is obviously the much larger version that we see Optimus running around with in the last night and I think that this too has also been detailed really nicely it's very faithful to what we see in the movie and there is so much sculpted in detailing on this handle section it really is amazing that a third party company has created something so faithful to the on-screen movie prop as well as the larger staff you also get a very very small die cast staff this has got minimal detailing due to the fact that it is in fact made out of die cast but I think that there is enough detailing to make it look as if though it is the prop out of the movie and this is designed to go with the human characters that came with La Haya, such as Vivian Wembley and you can in fact use this on the Nemesis or Optimus Prime figure and I'll show you how to implement that later on. And then the final more obscure accessory that this figure comes with is in fact an accessory for the Peru kill which was Unique Toys version of a masterpiece movie Lockdown. Of course I did review that figure so please feel free to check out that review but this here is obviously to 
replicate the blade that Lockdown used in the final battle of Age of Extinction, and it just enables us to armor Lockdown up to match his on-screen appearance. In terms of actually inserting the small die-cast staff into the figure, essentially what you're going to want to do here is just remove this chest piece armor as if though you were going to transform him. This unfortunately does make the arm slightly droop as you are in fact compromising the stability, but if you do in fact take the staff, you can slide it in this groove section, and this is supposed to replicate when Optimus actually stores the staff within his chest. Unfortunately, you are unable to actually close the chest up, so this is obviously more for a quick snap of photography than as opposed to a permanent display option. In order to actually store the shield and sword combo onto the back, it is relatively easy as this big notch here does in fact plug into this hole in the back. However, you can in fact insert this small dagger piece onto the shield in order for all of the accessories to actually be stored. As you can see, there is a tiny tab here that will tab into this slot here. So you essentially just want to line that up, plug that in, and there you have all of the key accessories of Optimus Sword on the shield. And then you can simply just plug that into the figure's back just like so. And that is your weapon storage for Optimus when in robot mode. And once again, this was definitely a look that we saw him pull off in the film. Unfortunately, you cannot just store the sword on its own, which was also a look we saw Optimus have in the movie. So if you are going to store the sword, it has to be with the shield. And here we have the Unique Toys Destroyer looking absolutely awesome. And I've honestly got to say that I think that this is one of the best third party Optimus Prime figures that I've ever, ever collected. Now I did originally collect the Unique Toys Challenger, which was essentially this figure just in the more traditional light blue and red color scheme. Of course, I'll show a comparison with that in just a second. However, I definitely think that these more more muted darker Nemesis Prime colors really complement this design of Optimus a lot better than the more vibrant colors and this figure's head sculpt is absolutely amazing and is really something to behold in person. This figure looks absolutely incredible from every single angle and much like their unique Toys Peru kill it is honestly black magic of where all the vehicle mode components actually end up as this figure actually can transform which is really really incredible. As you can see just from this very very awful pose you can in fact articulate the figure in a variety of different ways here i've got the dagger implemented onto the figure's hand as well as him holding his sword and this hit here looks absolutely incredible and really really does look very very awesome now turning to the figure's detail as i've spoken about it so much of course first of all i'm going to show you the brand new head sculpt which is different from their previous unique toys challenger this head sculpt looks absolutely incredible and when i actually do bring out the challenger to compare you will really be able to see the stark difference and why i'm making such a big deal about this update in head design this really really does look incredible and there is just so much sculpted in detailing particularly on the side of the figure which was something that they didn't have to go the extra mile and include as you can see i have opted to go with the face plate look as this actually can convert to have the mouth plate but you can pick out some lovely details such as the subtle red in the eyes to give him a more evil decepticon type of look and i really like the metallic black paint that they've used to highlight some of the different sections of the helmet design it really does contrast very nicely with the gunmetal grey. Of course this does in fact have a gimmick where if you lift it up and flip it up much like the Armoured Knight and Calibre Optimus from Takara, pull this section out and rotate it around and collapse it back down, you do in fact expose a mouth plateless looking Optimus and there is just so much phenomenal sculpted in detailing here as well. You can pick out the mouthpiece of Prime as well as this whole area here which has been sculpted incredibly nicely and the eyes too have also once again been picked out in a really really nice red paint. If I bring out the original Unique Toys Challenger of course I really hope that you can see the stark difference straight away. This version here is just so much more accurate. It's so much more slender with the antennae sections than this one was. I definitely think these are slightly too long and the eyes to me definitely looked rather cartoonish on this release as opposed to this release which looks a lot more movie accurate. Now this version here did in fact have electronics and the eyes did in fact light up with a blue LED whereas this version has decided to scrap that which I definitely think benefits the overall look so I can kind of excuse as to why this head sculpt doesn't look as good as this one. However if I had one criticism with this release is the fact that I did wish that instead of packaging those same accessories for lockdown and the staff accessories I wish that they would have perhaps packaged a separate second head sculpt of this painted in the colors to match this as this didn't have the option of being able to flip the mouth guard you actually had to pull it off and plug it back on and then if you wanted the nemesis prime look with the red slash you had to pull the whole head off so including an extra head sculpt with this one with the more accurate look to go with this definitely would have been extremely beneficial and probably would have made people who bought this figure double dip and buy this release
Moving down now to the chest area, as you can see, I think that the paint here is really, really nice. You've got the amazing metallic blue and green paint apps for the flames on the chest. And there is so much sculpted in detailing and paintwork going on here, which looks incredible. This is obviously where you would, in fact, place an Autobot sticker. As this is a third party figure, there are no Autobot or trademark symbols on this figure, unfortunately. But if you have some Reaper label stickers, this is definitely a very easy fix. I love these shoulder sections here. These are very, very slender and very moving accurate and they do in fact articulate to move out of the way of articulation which I'll demonstrate soon. Moving down to the arms now you would actually not believe if I told you that these are in fact the front sections of the truck. These definitely streamline incredibly well and do compress and we've got some nice sculpted in detailing here of where the gauntlets would be and I think that the hands look absolutely incredible. As this figure is roughly a leader class scale I think that the amount of detail and attention has that has been put into this piece is really quite astonishing. Turning around now to the back now this is of course where this completely blew me away as every single release of the last night optimus or age of extinction design that we've got from hasbro has in fact had an awful ghastly backpack unless you picked up the caliber version which actually had you separating the backpack off this version actually has it so that all the vehicle mode pieces are in fact stored on the robot and you don't have to separate anything and you are left with a very clean looking backpack Moving down now to the lower section of the figure, as you can see, I think that this too also tidies up incredibly nicely. If you move down now to the back of the legs, this is obviously where a lot of the vehicle mode parts actually do in fact store. However, they do compress exceptionally well and you are left with a very streamlined and very slender looking design. We do in fact have some nice detailings on the sides of the legs, including lots of mechanical components and the flame detailing too is also really nice. We've also got these extra pieces on top, which could have just literally have been painted on, but it's nice to see these being extra pieces as they do look rather three-dimensional and definitely give a sense of realism to the character. And then the shins have also been painted really, really nicely. And then even looking at the figure's toes, as you can see, I think that these clean up incredibly well. And turning on to the other side, we do have where the chrome sections of the grill are stored. So overall for detailing, I think that this figure really, really does look incredible and really does evoke a sense of masterpiece to its overall quality. Now turning to the figure's articulation, once again, is a very pleasant surprise. The head is on a swivel joint, so it can look left and right, as well as look up and down on a hinge joint to a rather great degree. It can also look down ever so slightly and up about that far. The arms are able to ratchet forwards and backwards on rather soft ratchet joints however can ratchet out to the sides and due to this section here being on a hinge this whole piece can in fact accommodate that posing and if you so choose you can in fact rotate this back in order to get a wider range of motion in the arm which is really awesome to see there is also a 360 degree rotation just above the elbow section where the bicep is and there is roughly a double jointed elbow joint which can in fact get a great range of motion and the back elbow plate is in fact on a hinge joint so can maneuver out of the way to accommodate poses. The hands are also on swivel joints so they can rotate 360 as well as hinge back and forth. The hands are in fact individually articulated par these three here which are in fact connected and do have approximately three points of articulation. One at the base, one in the middle and then finally one at the tip and the same goes for the index finger which is independently articulated as so is the thumb so you can in fact rotate those and pose those in whatever way you so choose. Turning to the whole torso section now, there is a waist joint which can actually rotate the full 360. However, you can in fact utilize this joint as an ab crunch in order to make him move forwards and backwards that far, which is really awesome to see. Now the legs are actually a really interesting piece of design as if you leave them like this, the articulation can be fairly restricted. Although if you pull them down just like so, and you will in fact hear them click, you do in fact get a greater range of motion. However, due to there being quite a lot of vehicle mode components in the legs, it does tend to weigh down the weight of the leg. So you are unfortunately left with rather floppy legs. They do hit ratchet out to the sides and due to these hip pieces being able to move out of the way, you do get a rather good range of motion. However, once again, the ratchet joints are not strong enough to accommodate the weight of the base of the leg and they can kick outwards about that far before being restricted by this section here. There is also a swivel joint which you can rotate left and right. This flap here is able to be lifted up and down and you can in fact split the skirt sections. The knees do in fact bend on a ratchet joint 90 degrees and this is a very heavy duty ratchet. I kind of wish that this ratchet was in fact here as I don't think we would have had any problems posing the legs around 
whatsoever. And then finally, the feet can in fact pivot to a really, really awesome angle. As you can see, that is a really deep ankle pivot. So overall for articulation, considering how faithful he is to the movie in terms of a robot mode, I think that they've done an exceptionally good job of making all of the pieces on this figure articulate in a way that would really allow you to pull this figure off in many, many poses. And for a unique toy size comparison, here I have the brand new Destroyer compared next to the Peru Kill. And of course, he's Mold Mate, the Unique Toys Challenger, as well as the Unique Toys La Haya. Personally, I think that he does in fact scale rather nice. As of course, he's exactly the same mold as this Optimus, so he's in the exact same scale minus some shortness of the antennae sections. He is a little bit taller than Lockdown, which I do believe is in fact movie accurate, and I think that the scale between Hot Rod and Optimus, it works really, really well here. Now, turning to the figure's transformation, of course, you wouldn't get a robot mode that looks this great unless the transformation was rather complex, which I definitely do believe that this figure is. It's not the most complex transforming figure ever, but it is definitely up there with some of them. In order to start off the transformation, what you are going to want to do is essentially take the hands and just sit them flush along the forearms, just like so. You're then going to want to take this section here and separate it, and then this whole piece will rotate around, and you'll just snap that back into place just like so and then repeat the same process on this side and then rotate that around take the hand and collapse that in and then just realign this up and snap that into place what we can then do is turn our attention to this section and just unhook these chest panels and then take this whole piece here lift the head up take this and pull this forwards pull this out and rotate that outwards just like so and then what you'll want to do here is essentially just take these halves here and split them and as you can see we are essentially completely blowing up the entire torso area of Optimus you're going to want to take these and straighten those out just like so and rotate that around so that you are left with something that looks like this and then repeat the same process for this side and then fold that out as well turn around now to the back and this is probably the most complex part of the transformation what you're going to want to do here is take this chest section here and fold this in just like so so that you can take this and rotate that and bring it around and then once that is done you're going to want to straighten this piece out here and rotate the arm just like so take this piece and rotate that as well and then in here there is a tab that will in fact plug into this slot so just align this up, rotate that up, fold that upwards just like so. Try and align that. It's rather difficult to show you on camera, but align that until it snaps into place just like so. And then what you can do is come here, and then this tab will plug into a slot that is on the inside of this section. So bring that up, and just align it so that this can then tab into place and then ensure that the hands are in fact sitting flush along this piece bring this down just like so if it did looks rather untidy it will be a lot neater when we do in fact bring the two halves together now repeat the same process now for this side so bring this all around and bring that section down what you want to do bring that out rotate this around and then take this and rotate that upwards swivel this all the way around now and then that same die cast tab will plug into the slot inside there so just line that up snap that into place and then hook this piece in bring that down for some reason this side does definitely tend to tab in a lot better than this side perhaps it is a tolerance issue on my copy of the figure what you want to do now is essentially take these pieces here and just bring those out they are rather difficult to get out but bring those out just like so. You don't necessarily have to push them all the way as we are in fact going to bring these pieces together. But what you'll want to do here is take this whole section and flip this all the way around, bring these pieces as well and lift those up just like so. And then these pieces here are going to want to be folded in just like so and repeat the same process and then bring these halves together and then just close all of this up and tab these two pieces in with one another and then this whole section here will in fact tab together as well I would be quite gentle with this section as the tab does appear to be rather brittle once this is done now we can bring this down and essentially just pull this piece away 
and it's just a matter of fact of getting that snapped into place and then push all of this in so all of this does in fact align and look something like this and there you essentially have the entire top section of the cab fully transformed and the smokestacks here these pieces that we flipped out on the other side should have now aligned properly with this section now what you'll want to do is of course turn your attention to these legs and what i recommend doing here is just taking this whole die cast frame and bringing it down just like that you can then take these legs here and flip those up and then flip that up as well and then these will align with this piece here and then this will be brought backwards what we can do here is untap this section on either side and then this here you're going to want to angle it like that and then angle this piece out like that repeat the same process on this side so the foot looks like this you're going to want to bring that down and then rotate that section around as well and then here this whole piece will lift upwards which will then allow you to rotate this section just like so and then what you can do here is bring this down as well ensuring now that these pieces are brought together and closed like so as you're going to want to have this completely bare and then turn around and repeat the same process on the other side now so fold this out just like so and then you can collapse that back down collapse that back down on this side as well and then here under there is a big slot that this tab here will snap into place so straighten the legs up and then just take these two halves and snap those together to really solidify the connection so that not all of this is just flopping around whilst you're trying to transform the figure and then with this what you can do is lift this section up and then bring this down just like so and then with the foot you're going to want to rotate this piece out and then rotate it around and then lift it up just like that this piece here you're going to want to rotate upwards as this will now rotate around and then will rotate downwards it's rather difficult to showcase on camera but there is a groove that you're going to want to follow just like that and then once this is aligned properly you can collapse the toe in just like so and then take this whole piece here bring this around and then this slot will plug into this tab here so just snap that into place and then now is all a matter of lining everything up so just take all of this and this tab here will plug into this slot here so just take this snap that into place just like so and then now you essentially have one half of the cab truck completely done and you're essentially just going to want to repeat the same process on this side so lift this up and then come to this chrome section and rotate that around line that up just like so lift that up and rotate this all the way around now and then slide this down just flip the toe in take this section here and snap that into place and then bring this together snapping all of this into place just like so and then we can bring these two chrome halves snap those together as well and then coming now to the back section as you can see there are two tabs that stick up from here and they will in fact lock into these two slots under there just to stop these halves from separating so you essentially just want to lap that over the top just like so and that is the unique toys destroyer in his western style alternate form and here we have the figure in his truck mode now as you could probably tell whilst the transformation wasn't painfully difficult it definitely had enough complexity to warrant the most definitive representation we've ever had for a night prime in the robot mode and i really think that the truck mode also clears up and looks very faithful to what we see in the movie part of the color scheme as you can see i really like the color scheme in the truck mode i think that the green or the blue works really really nicely against the black paint and the silver highlights around the flames also look really really nice as you can see he's got a very very shiny chrome grill which i think looks really really awesome and then the gas canisters too are done in a silver paint app and the doors are in fact able to open however it is more for an aesthetic display than actual functionality as they are rather difficult 
to in fact get out i tend to just use this accessory they do just open just like so to reveal literally nothing but it is a display option that you can utilize if you're displaying the figure from the front whereas on the side the illusion is slightly compromised but it is still a nice look nevertheless turning around to the back now this is where i wish perhaps the smokestacks were chrome but of course i think that the color of the smokestacks in the robot mode look really nice and you can see some detailing of the rear end of the truck which has been really nicely sculpted and we've also got some flames on the back section and we've even surprisingly got a w insignia which is of course to replicate western star i'm quite surprised that unique toys did in fact put this on this figure as i'm sure that could be in fact compromising some licensing agreements but nevertheless it is still a nice added touch and all of the hubcaps are in fact picked out in a really awesome silver chrome and the tires are in fact rubber giving this figure a really masterpiece premium feel and he does roll incredibly well which is really really awesome to see so an absolute fantastic looking truck you've got the chrome on these visor sections as well and the transparent red dark plastic really does look awesome for the screen of the truck as well as the glass on the side doors it really really does look like a very awesome very detailed looking truck and of course as stated previously if you do have the accessories and you do in fact wish to store them on the figure that same port can be used and you can plug it in however due to the weight and the fact that the trailer hitch is in fact on its own hinge joint it does tend to droop this back quite considerably so i tend to just sit it off to the side but once again that is a really nice inclusion and if you had a trailer that fitted this i haven't actually found one none of my masterpiece transformers trailers can fit on this unfortunately but i'm sure there is a trailer out there i think that this could be one of the most awesome looking trucks ever to be created by unique toys this really does look absolutely spectacular and i think that his truck mode looks just as good as his robot mode so that is my review on the unique toys destroyer if you haven't guessed already i highly recommend this figure the robot mode is by far the best representation that we've ever got for the night version of optimus as he appeared in age of extinction and the last night and this figure actually transforms. Personally, I think that the best version of this design will always be the 3A version, but this release here actually has the ability to transform from robot mode into a very well-designed truck mode that looks just as faithful as this robot mode does. I think that the overall articulation of this figure as well is really, really well done. He articulates at almost every single point that you would expect him to, and is definitely up there with some of the official movie masterpiece figures that are put out by Hasbro and Takara. I really like this brand new Nemesis paint scheme. I think that it complements the overall design exceptionally well and he definitely does look amazing when on display. The brand new head sculpt I definitely think is a vast improvement over the original Unique Toys Challenger as it definitely is a much more movie accurate look and I really like the implementation of how you can switch it from the battle mask to the normal mouth plate without having to swap any pieces off. It's all integral and can all be done just by using the mechanism within the head. Head. I also think that he comes with a great range of accessories and honestly I couldn't imagine what else this figure could come with as he literally comes with everything that we see him use in the movie. The transformation whilst complex is definitely rather fun and doesn't take too much time meaning that it is rather enjoyable to go from robot mode to vehicle mode. If you are in the market for picking one of these figures up then I definitely recommend that you check out the links down in the description box below where you'll be taken to Shosi's store where this figure is available now as well as the wide range range of other transforming collectibles. I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, please let me know down in the comment section below. And until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.